take charge of your leadership development. Join our How to Take the Lead Substack community for bonus materials, exclusive content, and discussions that will challenge and change the way you lead. Visit howtotakethelead.com to find out more. You're creating a sticky moment. Actually, let's not use the sticky word. <laughs> now it's getting a bit, I, I like the first bit, now it's getting a bit weird, I've got to be honestly. You're listening to How to Take the Lead with Lee Griffith and Carrie Ann Wade. Two corporate colleagues turned business besties who question everything we've ever learned about leadership. What started with us putting the world to rights over a gin after work is now a weekly show challenging the myths and perceptions and exploring what leadership looks like in the modern day. We'll also be sharing our experiences and stories along the way. You can find our show notes at howtotakethelead.com. Hit subscribe to receive new episodes every Thursday. Plus, we'd love for you to rate or leave a review of the show. And please share your thoughts and stories on the topics we cover using the hashtag how to take the lead. Welcome to episode nine of how to take the lead. I'm here with the lovely Lee. Hello Lee, Hello. how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, you're good. I am pleased to hear it. And in this episode, as we always do, we pick a topic associated with leadership that we want to explore a bit more, discuss, talk about, share some of our thoughts on. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about storytelling. And the reason, well, first of all, I'd say, obviously, you and I, Lee, are communicators by profession and professional background. So for us, I think the concept of storytelling probably comes quite naturally to us and we understand what we mean when we talk about storytelling but I I have been more aware recently that when we talk about storytelling in a sort of business setting or a business context that some people seem to find it a bit awkward and something that they can't really get their head around as it were in terms of like you know what what do you mean I have to tell a story and I think there's a sort of connotation that when we're talking about storytelling we're talking about making stuff up like making up a story I just thought it'd be helpful to set the context a bit before we get into the conversation a bit more about what is it that we really mean by storytelling and sort of just briefly elaborate on that so what would your take on it be Lee? Yeah it's a really interesting one isn't it and again we've covered a few of these topics this series of things that seem relatively new and potentially icky in their concept but actually they go back a really long way but just have been called different things so leaders are really used to for example making sure they have case studies to give some illustration to a point they're making and storytelling is a way of giving an example or giving a case study or whatever and i think for me the essence of a story, and that's why we use that phrase storytelling now, is to connect people to either personal understanding of an issue or an experience, because we know people, we as individuals will all relate to stories. We either recognise ourselves or our friends and family in a story. So when we use storytelling in leadership, it's a really good way to cut through, build connection, whether that's a connection with you as an individual or with an organisation and the story it tells. And I think we also find it really easy to remember stories as opposed to other stuff. If you think you watch a soap or a TV show or you read a book, you can relay what's happened in that to someone else really easily it becomes really quite sticky. I, I like to see it as sticky content. And I, <laughs> I love that sticky content. I love that it's, little it's, phrase. It stays yeah. with you, doesn't it? And I think if you can illustrate a serious point with a story, then you're creating a sticky moment. Well, actually, let's not use the sticky word. <laughs> <laughs> now it's getting a bit, I, I like the first bit, now it's getting a bit weird, I've got to be honest, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can illustrate a serious point with yeah. a story, then you're creating a moment that people remember more easily. They're going to remember the key facts of the story. They're going to remember how it made them feel. And they're less likely to do that if you just ram data or dry information down your throat. Yeah. And I think, I sorry, I'm on a roll here. <laughs> but I think as a leader, and we've talked about this so much. You're there to inspire, you're there to paint a picture of the vision that you have for your team or your organisation. And 
these are usually really future focused things. So there isn't necessarily anything tangible that people can touch and feel at that moment to understand what you're trying to achieve. People have to use their imagination. And I think that's where storytelling really comes into its own and is really helpful because it can fill in the gaps. If you go back to like the novel analogy, when you read a book, you you really do build a picture of the characters in your head, the place it's set, what's happening. You almost create like a film version of that. And I think that for me is when leaders tell great stories, what they do for their staff or communities or whoever they're trying to connect with. Yeah, brilliant. And I, and I love that analogy around the sort of novel or the book. And, and it's absolutely right, isn't it? As humans, in, I don't know if you've ever done this, you've got your favourite books that you read. And like you say, you can completely picture through the words on that page. You can almost see it like a film. And often people make books into films. And sometimes you're quite disappointed mm-hmm. by the film mm-hmm. version because it doesn't match that kind of image that you've built up in your head of of how it looked for you. So, yeah. so that is it is quite interesting, as you say, like as human beings, we are so used to in all aspects of our life that that whole notion of storytelling, aren't we? Through the TV we watch, films, books, movies, when we're at school, you know, we learn to read through reading stories, people telling us stories before the point we can read. So I feel like it is a, a huge part of what it means to be a human. It's part of human nature. So for me, like you say, it makes sense that in that business or leadership context that storytelling would be part of that. And you've started to touch on it a bit already Lee, in terms of what you've been saying around why as a leader, storytelling can be really helpful for setting that vision and engaging people. But I'd like to just explore that a little bit more, I guess. So, mm. you know, why as a leader should we consider storytelling as part of maybe like our toolkit or our kind of, you know, communications capability? Like, why is it important specifically as a leader to be more focused on storytelling? Yeah, I love that notion of it being part of a a toolkit. Although when I think of toolkits, I always think of Levi Roots with his sunshine kit with all his spices. I don't know why my mind went there when you said (laughs) that. I was thinking Bob the Builder with his tool belt on with everything (laughs) hanging off it. So... I've clearly got stuck on a very early story, such as childhood stories. <laughs> but I, I think the notion of having the ability to tell stories as, as a leader is a way to really connect and take people with you. It helps you to make the complicated easier to understand. It's a really helpful way to share learning. And ultimately, what you're trying to do through it is inspire some kind of action. If you think about all the great social movements in history, they've all started with a story, either, you know, someone's dream, I have a dream, I've got this vision, um, or someone's lived experience that starts to get shared. So, yeah, I think for me, you use stories and and maybe we'll touch on this later, how you use stories, but you use it in a way that I think can cut through a lot of noise to connect to the root of an issue. And I think from a psychological point of view, you, you know, it is proven that when you listen to a story, it engages and fires up different parts of your brain, not just that data information side, but that maybe your sensory side, the creative side. And so it becomes a far more whole body experience almost for a person if they listen to a story that they really connect with. And I think as individuals, as humans, we are always seeking out stories. If you think about the trashy tabloids or gossip and all of that we're always seeking something that goes oh you know have you read this do you know that so and so is doing this so and so is doing that and I think if you just give dry data or lots of information and people don't have a story attached to it they'll create their own and I think that's the risk for leaders not using storytelling we talk about leaders owning their narrative and I think telling stories to connect to the points you want to make is a really good way of owning your narrative yeah definitely it's part as you say it's like a tool isn't it for like what your narrative is so this is now what you do to get that narrative out there and I think in organizations or at least 
you know, some that I've worked in or that I've connected with, that there's been a bit of a spell where people have talked about the journey, like we need to describe the journey that the organisation is on. Um, and it's your point about connection, isn't it? To describe that journey, really what you're doing is telling a story. Mm. As a leader, you're telling a story about, you know, and it might be where we've been, where we are now, where we want to go in the future. But you, you tell that story to demonstrate that journey in the hope that what you do is connect with people and, and engage them to, to go on that journey with you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think everything you say is, you, you know, absolutely valid in terms of why as a leader storytelling is important. And I'm sure we'll get onto it because it's not the be all and the end all. And there's there's not a certain right or wrong answer about how or, or what story you tell. But you touched on that point. I think it was like almost leading up to consistency. So if actually mm. people fill the void with their own stories that may not actually be reflective of where the organisation is at or what your vision is as a leader, then you've got that lack of consistency, I think, which is I know we've talked about in other yeah. episodes before. So. I think also when we look at storytelling in leadership, it isn't just the stories that leaders tell people. There will be stories being told all over your organisation, what your staff are saying to each other over a coffee, what managers are telling their teams, perhaps what your direct reports are saying about you and the organisation. So I think a leader in storytelling mode is also someone who observes and listens and who's picking up on what's happening on the ground and knows the stories of the wider organisation, making sure that their own stories are enabling them to stay connected and relevant with what's happening. Absolutely. And I know we've talked about before, Lee, like sometimes when you're new into an organisation, you can feel that desperate need to make your mark you know, chuck everything out, start again, really have an impact. But actually, we have talked about the importance of understanding the history of the organisation, the experiences of the team that have come mm. before you. And a lot of that, again, you'll gain through the storytelling of other people. So like you say, listening is a, a really important part of that whole storytelling culture because you need to listen and understand the stories that people are telling you about what it feels like to work here, what it used to feel like to work here you might need to do some of that being a bit more respectful of the stories that you're hearing about what things used to feel like for people yeah. so like you say the, the more you delve into it the more that you see as a leader storytelling is just such a huge part of life not just working life but yeah. life in general and and you're right everybody is out there telling their story about what it's like to work in your organization so there's also that link with reputation and mm. perceptions of you mm. and perceptions of your organization based on the stories that other people are telling so definitely something I feel like it's really important to be clued into as a leader Are you a new, established or aspiring CEO looking to maximise your impact in the workplace? At Sunday Skies, I help you get clear on your big vision, create a strategy that connects and the communication plan to deliver it. No matter where you are in your CEO journey through my unique blend of coaching and W consulting, I will give you the strategy, support and space to succeed in post. Visit sundayskies.com to find out more and sign up for my email to receive intelligence and information that will challenge and change the way you lead. If you're enjoying this episode of How to Take the Lead, please hit subscribe and why not leave a review or rating. We'd also love to hear your stories and thoughts on today's topic. Please DM us, our links are in the show notes, or tag us into your socials using the hashtag How to Take the Lead. We've all probably had experiences and worked with leaders who are brilliant storytellers who really engage you and inspire you and use that tool of storytelling to kind of capture your imagination you know really fire you up and motivate you but I'm sure we've also had experiences of others who are maybe not quite so good at it or they perhaps haven't really grasped the concept of storytelling and that probably sometimes can feel a bit awkward for people you can tell that people that as leaders are maybe not so comfortable in that space and for me I wonder if some of that is about more of the practicalities around how do you tell a compelling story how do you make a story compelling how do you pick which story to tell because I've had experiences of leaders who maybe rather than a story use an anecdote but the anecdote doesn't quite match or line up yeah. with 
yeah. the narrative that they're trying to share. So I'd be interested in your views, Lee, about what makes a compelling story and how you can think about that as a leader. Yeah, I think on your point around anecdotes first I do think the mistake that some people make is that they know they have to tell a story and then they try to shoehorn it into their narrative and as you say it might jar with the tone of what they've been saying sometimes that can be really powerful as a technique but sometimes it just falls a bit flat it might be that actually just having an anecdote it doesn't leave you with that sense of I want more or the have a so what moment which is what you're seeking from a story it might be someone just only has one or two stories and they just keep repeating it and everyone's going oh bloody hell it's not that one again (laughs) I've I've had that experience of a leader before where it's like oh it's that it's back to that story again that everyone else could probably tell better than the person yeah it loses the impact yeah they've heard it so many times yeah And then it could be that they've just picked any story because they felt the needs and that pressure to, and I've definitely worked with people who, if every single presentation that they did, it was like, I need a story, I need a story and find me a story. And and for me, I don't think it works as easy as that. A, I don't think you need to have a story in absolutely everything you do because it can look a bit trite and a bit false if you know you're just giving your weekly update to <laughs> the organization and suddenly you want to come in with this big motivational story it doesn't it doesn't really work and for me I think there's something about it being a genuine story so a story that you've either witnessed or heard or seen firsthand that you relate to and it makes that point and I think it could be really hard and I certainly from from my communications background when you get told just give me a story and the leader doesn't connect with the story because they just want it thrown in as as an example so I do think you need to be careful in how and when you use stories in terms of what makes a compelling story I think there are a few principles which are and, and I suppose it's the same for a lot of the stuff that you communicate know your audience people are going to connect with different stories in different ways so you need to know what's likely to connect best with the people you're trying to to talk to be really clear around what's the purpose so what's the objective what's the end point I'm trying to get to by telling this story if you can't boil it down to a single key message that you want to get across you probably haven't got a very strong story to begin with and I think that's always a really good marker I think when you are looking at a structure of the story it's the same as when you read a book you know you have to have a hero that hero isn't you and I think that again is somewhere that leaders trip up that they position themselves or the organization as the hero of the story and that puts people off but the hero needs to encounter a problem of some sort and there needs to be a process of coming to a resolution or have a way ahead and and it is as simple as that obviously you don't need to be as detailed as a novel and I do think some people go into unnecessary detail and lose people in the process of telling their story and I think there's also something around the type of story for the situation so not only the audience but the type of action or outcome that you want so if you want to get people to buy into an idea you need a story that's absolutely going to relate to that person that you need to make the change and it needs some kind of positive outcome to really motivate them to want to make that change if you want to show who you are as a person and a bit about your values you need a story that's going to reveal something about you It might be a vulnerability, it might be how you dealt with a difficult situation or some adversity, but you're sharing and opening up about something that gives gives a really good example. Or if your aim is that you want to share information or perhaps improve knowledge within a team or an organisation or whatever, then your story needs to make sure it's got that problem, it's got a bit of context, it's got a solution. And that you're really clearly explaining it 
you're making sure that the information you provide is really relevant and it's focused. It doesn't kind of meander through. I would say there's a really great book that I read that was recommended to me by a coach many, many years ago called um, Squirrel Inc. by Stephen Denning. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. And it is a story in and of itself, but it's a story that illustrates leadership through storytelling. And he's got a section in here around the seven forms of organisational storytelling. So if you want to try and think, what type of story do I need to tell for what type of example? This is a really good book for that. I love that. A really good top tip. Thank you, Lee. And as you've been speaking through some of those examples that you've given, I'm, I can already see in my mind like the exact stories that people I've worked with as leaders have told that kind of fit those examples and some which have worked well and not so well and I think Mm. often you are perhaps a custodian of someone else's story that you're using to illustrate something so I think you have to do that really respectfully but you also again have to think about is this story I'm telling really hitting the purpose that I'm I'm intending to tell it for so I've worked with someone before who used to tell a brilliant story that was about reflecting diversity and fairness and it was really on the money and everyone was always really compelled by the story and they were saying you know in our organization this is how we want to operate and and here's the story but the same person then had another story that they would tell quite frequently in staff sessions that was about innovation but actually it just didn't quite hit the mark like you could Mm. almost see the audience weren't quite engaging with it in the same way as the other story because like you said maybe on the face of it, it felt like this is a story about being innovative, so I'm going to tell it. But actually, it it didn't really align with what we mm. were trying to achieve in the organisation. So it just felt a bit like, okay, that's a really interesting story from the past, but and so what? And I think it's that yeah. and so what piece, isn't it? If you're going to use storytelling in that way, then and so what? And yeah. And I liked the point that you made around leaders not always making the stories about themselves. So although often you might have to tell other people's stories. Sometimes it's more authentic and more impactful to have that person tell their own story as part of how you're doing that. And I know there are organisations and and the one that I work for does this at the start of every board meeting. They invite a patient or a carer to come and share their story about using a particular service. And actually Mm -hmm. that's far more powerful to hear it directly than it would be to hear it third hand through one of the board members relaying the story if that makes sense because it it has that much more impact so I think there's some really top tips in there actually about how how to pick the right story and how to make that compelling I think you're you're right about sharing other people's stories can be something that you tell but you need to demonstrate how you're connecting to it so that other people understand how they connect to it or you need that person's voice to shine through and I think back to one of the strongest stories that I ever worked on in in my corporate career was we did a massive transformation program shifting care out of hospitals into community and it was really really tempting for the leadership to want to keep talking about the drivers for change from a financial point of view or from a technical point of view, how many beds, how many staff, how much money we're going to need to save and all of that kind of stuff. And that started to become the narrative. And I did some filming with some patients who were using the new services that we were developing. And there was this one lady who was in her 80s and she was talking about the perceptions of being an 80-year-old how she wanted to keep her independence, but people were treating her as if she was old and she didn't feel old. And she said, all the magazines talk about, you know, you're in your older years. She said, I don't feel like that. And she was having these struggles with with her health and it was making people treat her more dependently than she, she wanted to be treated. And the biggest difference that we made to her life and her independence, in her own words, was changing her toilet seat at home. And... Amazing. This lady telling her story in her own words was so, so powerful because she was our family member. She was us in the future. It was totally relatable and and you got it from the emotion that she shared in the story, from the from the relief she had that her you know issue had been resolved. And um 
I think when we captured that story and started sharing it, whether it was us using the video in lots of different settings or whether because the leadership team connected with the story as well that they could share it, it just transformed the narrative of the programme that we did. And it really helped us to get more people on side with the changes because they could relate it to yeah. them or their mum or their dad or whoever. And that relatability is really important, isn't it? And I'm, I'm going to take a slight tangent, but hopefully bring it back to the relatability <laughs> bit, because I think there are people who, you know, I think, I think we agree like it's part of human nature to be interested in stories, but there will always be people who are more driven by the data, by yeah. the science, by the facts, by, you know, something that's maybe feels slightly more academic. But if I liken it to probably the start and the height of the pandemic, obviously, the country had all of the facts about the numbers and the numbers in themselves were fairly compelling in terms of you know it's this many people are being mm -hmm. hospitalized this many people have, have got covid for example this is how contagious covid is but i still think if you hadn't been impacted by covid yourself it was like oh well those numbers sound terrible but and so what for me why can't i still go out and see my friends and family and it wasn't until we started to get to the point where through the media and in, in, in other sources we were able to actually hear directly from people who had that experience of COVID mm. how that really impacted their lives or mm. family members of people who had been you know really poorly and hospitalized with COVID that I think that almost worked then with the facts to be able to complete yeah. that whole compelling story where people yeah. were actually see the impact that it was having so definitely hearing people's stories in their own words are so powerful and yeah. they don't always have to be really traumatic things but as you say they there usually is in in the most compelling personal experiences we hear about something that somebody's seen as a challenge and then them overcoming that challenge yeah, and that's the bit that really yeah. resonates with you I think you're right on the the big numbers thing I always used to talk about when people talk about financial challenges and we need to save X number of millions or we're wasting Y number of millions. And I wish you say we're talking monopoly money here. People don't see it as real. It's not something they can touch and feel. They can't picture it. It's a big, it's a big figure. They know it's a big figure, but it doesn't relate to their reality. And if you need to connect with people and from a financial point of view, you start talking about the pennies or you look at it on a personal impact basis, well, what does it mean if this person's not getting this? And we see this now with the cost of living crisis. It's exactly the same. It boils it down to what, what does it mean for me on an individual? What's my reality every day? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've just touched upon that, you know, that element of not everybody will be comfortable with pure storytelling and we're not suggesting that's the only tool that you've got as a leader. But if you are a leader who finds it maybe a bit uncomfortable because you are more about the data the science behind things whatever and and it doesn't come naturally to, to you to tell a story it's not maybe you know how you would normally approach things but you've realized as we've been talking today it is a really effective way of engaging people sharing your vision supporting your leadership how can you actually practice storytelling to become mm. more comfortable with it and to feel like it's something you can do as part of your leadership? Mm. Just to reinforce, I suppose, the point of why storytelling is important, I have a stat for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's excellent. It's all coming together as if we planned it. There was a study when I was looking at some other research, I found this study that was done by a lecturer which showed that 63% of people that he studied remembered the stories they were told and only 5% of people remembered the statistics. That is such a good stat. I love it. But I don't think data needs to be boring. I do think you, you want to use data. And I do think if you use it sparingly, it has super impact. I think the most engaging of academic people can bring the evidence and data to life through stories. You can connect a story to a number quite easily. My, my husband works in stats and data, and it's always quite interesting because he is more stats and data driven and I'm a story person. So our conversations can always be quite funny. But he's been on courses around how to develop narratives with data. So it's not necessarily about being, because I think this is a fear of, of data-driven people, that they've got to be creative with the facts. And that isn't what we're saying. It's, it's more about breaking down what a number actually means. So it isn't about, I need to, to 
make the numbers look sexy, which I do think sometimes I've heard that used as an excuse for why we can't yeah. have a bit of flavour around something. I think if it doesn't come naturally to you and you want to start developing that notion of bringing storytelling into, into the way you work, I think it's like anything. It's a bit of try and error. It's a bit of practice. I think certainly when I've worked with leaders, I usually say start to keep a note of stories as you go around doing your day-to-day work. So you start to build a bank up before you perhaps use them. So you'll become more aware of the stories around you. So it could be maybe just listening and observing people in the organisation and what stories they're telling, as we said earlier in the episode. It could also be things like sitting at home watching the news or an interview or, you know, some great TED Talks, for example. So you could start to see how people are using stories in big, serious subjects. It could be when you watch a presentation at work, just looking at how they try and connect on the topic or don't, because you can also pick up by what people don't do and what you think would make it more compelling. I think the risk is that someone starting out afresh feels like they have to create these massive moments that has everyone laughing or crying in their seats and I I don't think we're suggesting that I I think that takes a lot of practice and only the really really skilled orators can achieve that and I I don't think that the most typical of us you know even us as communicators can always do that (laughs) I don't think you need to drown your narrative in lots of stories one powerful story says so much than 10 trying to be shoehorned in throughout what it is you do and I think make sure you link it back to the bigger picture so what's the message you're trying to get across what's the action you want people to take as a result of sharing this information and I think if you're really struggling there's a lot of great books and I can share a couple of recommendations there's lots of courses and Actually, working with a coach is a really good way to start testing stories as you collect them. Some people might feel feel fearful of it, but actually the more you practice, the more confident you become. And the more that, like you say, you observe others who are really good at it or really bad at it, the more it's in your mindset to think about it. But I loved your point about like you don't need hundreds of stories in, in every communication that you're sharing with people like one powerful story that really illustrates the point that you want to make is what you need so some really useful stuff there which probably brings us to our part of the episode where we do share a couple of our takeaways and top tips so Lee what would yours be? I would say going back to the starting point storytelling is a really great way to build connection and I think it is the clearest way that you can set out your store as a leader without telling the story you're just presenting facts and information and people are going to fill the void and create their own narratives which might not be the story you want them to be telling and I also would say don't make yourself the hero of the story I think that's really important it's it's about other people not you it's not a dark art so don't feel like you need to be inauthentic in the way that you tell the stories and practice, practice, practice. It will come, it will all start to click eventually. I've got a couple of books. I've mentioned Squirrel Link by Stephen Denning. I'm currently reading Unleash the Power of Storytelling by Rob Eisenbach, which is really good. It's quite a practical guide. And another book I absolutely love is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller which is more organisational stories than individual leadership stories. But I think as a leader who's looking at the bigger vision and how they tell that story, absolutely a, a must read. Brilliant. I'm loving your your book recommendations there. Thank you, Lee. And I think the only thing I would add in terms of my own top takeaway is just be really clear on the purpose. So mm-hmm. what is the so what that you want to leave people with? Because that will help you decide what compelling story you need to tell so why are you telling the story in the first place is is probably something it's worth considering 
Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you're the first to receive new episodes when they drop every Thursday. If you enjoyed the show, we'd love it if you would rate it or leave a review. And let us know your thoughts and own experiences. Get in touch with either of us on LinkedIn, Twitter or Instagram. Or use the hashtag how to take the lead. Until next week, get out there and take the lead.